Welcome to Brilliantly British. My name is Lawrence and today I'm going to show you how to make lamb cutlets with some extra trimmings. So as I show you how to make it, sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting your feet up too and enjoy this episode. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. To celebrate the arrival of the Easter season or because you fancy a treat, I'll be showing you how to prepare lamb cutlets with sweetheart cabbage, the smoothest spinach mashed potatoes with a mint and Madeira wine sauce. So now that we have your attention, allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British lamb cutlets, you will need some cabbage, spinach, garlic, a rack of lamb ribs. You will of course need some butter, ideally homemade Brilliantly British butter. Follow the link on screen to learn how to make it yourselves. You will need some brown sugar, a pinch of flour, a potato, some fresh mint. You will also be needing some malt vinegar and some Madeira wine. And finally, to avoid the occurrence of bland food, you will of course need some salt and some pepper. That's it for the making of today's Brilliantly British lamb cutlets. But, 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 before we get started, before we do anything at all, I say switch on your kettle, brew yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you cook. So let's start with the lamb, which should have its fat scored with a crisscross pattern, being careful not to cut through the fatty layer and into the flesh. Do this in order to encourage the fat to render out whilst cooking. With the fat scored, season liberally with salt only, and then with the back of a spoon, massage the salt into all crevices before leaving it out to rest, ready for later on. Rewarding yourself thereafter with a sip of tea. Now, off camera, I peeled, chopped, and boiled some potatoes, which have cooked perfectly. And in order to keep them hot, leave them as they are with the heat off in hot water ready for later on. With the potatoes taken care of I'll drizzle some oil into a pan and therein will go my spinach under a lid over a medium heat to gently wilt for a few minutes which gives you enough time to enjoy an episode from the channel not forgetting of course to like and subscribe. In no time at all the spinach will have wilted and will immediately need to be relocated into a bowl to prevent it from overcooking before being placed to one side ready for later on. Next you'll need to delicately DJ a block of butter, sip on some tea, begin preheating your oven and slowly start heating the pan for your lamb. Now the butter once melted should then be trickled into your blending spinach. Continue to blend thereafter until the spinach and butter have homogenized. Then season with salt and pepper, sip on some tea, taste not bad. We'll be returning to this in just a moment. Now for the lamb, carefully lay your rack into your preheated pan fat side down to begin frying. As the lamb cooks, do your best to ensure that as much of it as possible is in contact with the pan, turning it over when it looks like this magnificent thing on screen now. Take the time thereafter to brown all other facets before laying on a baking tray or rack in my case, which as you can see has a foil underlay, which will now go into my preheated oven to roast perfectly, leaving me with time to attend to my mash. Today's mash, because of the spinach, will provide consumers with a healthy dose of iron and vitamin A, but crucially will be the definition of smooth. As the process of preparation involves turning your drained boiled potatoes into your food processor with the essential sip of tea, and well, you know what to do. With my superfood mash made, I'll then turn the contents out into my saucepan and then over a gentle heat, maintain its temperature whilst covered, ready for later. Now, not wanting to be idle, I'll then crack on by beginning to cook my sliced sweetheart cabbage. 
And yes, why not cook with some of the beautiful rendered lamb fat, along with some salt and pepper, a sip of tea, over a gentle heat, whilst covered, needing little to no attention at all. Not long after, six to seven minutes, actually, take the opportunity to summon the lamb from your oven, perfectly cooked lamb, I should say, and for best results, transfer it to a bowl under a lid in order to rest and tenderize. I'll now begin to cook some finely minced garlic in the pan of rendered lamb fat over a medium low heat and then attend to my now cooked cabbage by seasoning with salt and pepper then placing to one side for just a moment. The pan, now over a medium high heat, should then be treated to a generous splash of Madeira wine followed by the addition of flour, brown sugar and some malt vinegar for some acidity. Once the sauce has thickened, switch off your source of heat, add your finely chopped mint and if necessary, tweak the flavour balance of the sauce with more vinegar, salt or sugar. With the sauce made, plate up with a layer of cabbage followed by a helping of mash before slicing to reveal the perfectly cooked interior, laying the lamb on top to finish. Having now plated this dish with its accompanying sauce, I think now is the time for... Tasting, tasting, tasting. All right, are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, one. Oh, I don't even want to cut it. Oh, but anyway, let's, let's do it. Enough. And then just drop on this thick sauce. Beautifully gelatinous. Great for the lamb. One of my favorite meats. Oh. Yes. 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 Mmm. Everything is perfect. Oh. All right. That was just one bite. But one bite was enough to allow me to come to the conclusion that this is, oh, I can't help but smile at it. This is amazing. It's amazing. This is so much simpler than the traditional full-on lamb roast that you have for Easter. This is in keeping with tradition and so much simpler to make, but I think this is just as rewarding, really. This sauce, this jelly that we almost, that we've kind of formed is amazing. You've got garlic in there. It's not overpowering. You've got the mint in there. It's refreshing. You've got sweetness coming through, a bit sour, and it'll be just the way you like it because you will have made it with the vinegar coming in there. Oh, amazing. Oh, and the Madeira wine. The Madeira what? The mash is punchy, strong. You've got the spinach coming through and it's good for you. Full of iron and vitamin A, apparently. The lamb is perfectly cooked, perfectly cooked. And oh, if you're a big fan of lamb, this dish is for you, specifically for you. Yes, we made it for you. I didn't even remember the cabbage. The cabbage hiding underneath there. Yeah. Hmm. See, I thought this dish was perfect already. And then you add the cabbage in, gives you texture. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This is brilliant, this, <laughs> this is brilliantly British, period. So what you must do now is as soon as possible, go to your local supermarket, butchers, wherever, get the ingredients and make this. You have to make this, please. Thank you, thank you, Thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make lamb cutlets with some extra trimmings, of course. Knowing that you liked this episode, don't forget to click on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases. Tell everyone you know about the Brilliantly British Food on this channel, and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on, and I will see you next time. Some spinach. Three. Two.